Good morning, everybody. My name is Patricia. Welcome to Charlton Benefice, St. Thomas and St. Luke's churches. Today, our service is streamed from St. Thomas Church, and with, whether you're watching from home or catching up later, we're delighted to welcome you here. My name is Patricia, again. I'm a member of the congregation, and I'll be guiding us through our worship this morning. We hope you will leave this service filled with Easter joy. Today is the start of Christian Aid Week. Christian Aid is a charity that works with the poorest of the world's poor. Before we start our service, let's remember that God makes all things new. So let's be quiet and pray that God will renew our hearts and minds here this morning. We go ahead and sing our first hymn, about 418. Our service this morning begins on page five. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Prayers of pertinence. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the word of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Cain has our first reading, and then Eric will read from Revelation. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Jedi heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in the trunks of I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheep coming down from heaven, being loaded, lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of praise, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house. Where we were, the Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied, accompanied me, and we went to the man's house. He told us how he would have seen the angels standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and the entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just at 
just as just as he have has opened said John are baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift and he gave us when we believed in the Lord, Jesus Christ, who was the eye that I could hinder the good. When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has been even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Revelation to John. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bridge adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, that will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Now we we'll proceed and sing our gradual hymn. That will be number 4445. If you may, if you can stand up. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. During supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, 
Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Like to sit down. Don't know about you, but I'm a bit puzzled. We're now back at the, the Last Supper. But you see, it's a very clever thing because for John, sort of times are not important. When things happened are not important. Because if you remember on Easter Sunday, when we read John, he combined both the appearance of Jesus and Pentecost, but we've separated them out. So today's reading could just as easily be something that happened after the resurrection, but John has slotted it in. Because where he says, you know, where I'm going, you can't come, could mean that Jesus is ascending into heaven. And at the moment, you can't go with him. It doesn't matter for John when it took place. What matters for John is the message that it gives. It's a bit difficult when you think about it because, you know, the people who left everything, those disciples who left everything to follow Jesus, they left home, they left work, they left their families, they left everything they knew behind and followed Jesus. And he's now saying to them, you can't follow me anymore. Where I'm going, you can't go. What kind of shock must that have been when they heard that? Because they'd given up everything to follow him. But you see, what he's saying to them is, you can't follow me, but I'm going to tell you how you should live. So what does he do? He gives them a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. I don't know about you, but I love making Indian curries. And I go on the internet to look for a new recipe. And if you look around, there's always one recipe that's out there. And they tell you that every Indian restaurant uses this recipe. And it's called the base recipe. Because have you ever wondered how they manage to get everything cooked and sent to you as quick as they do? It's because they have a base recipe that's already prepared and then they add to it depending on what you've ordered. So if you've ordered a jalfrezi, they'll put certain things in it. If you've ordered a korma, they put certain things in it. Well, I think that what Jesus is saying to us today is that our base recipe as Christians is love that in everything we do, it's based 
on love. It's not good enough to have faith. It's not good enough to turn up here every Sunday. It's not good enough to pray. It's not good enough to worship if you've not got love. So what's this love all about? Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. How did he love us? He loved us to the end. He gave his life for us. So the challenge to us is to give our lives for each other. And he also says to us, by this love, others will know that you are my disciples. And I always remember a phrase that somebody once said to me. And it wasn't said as a compliment. See how these Christians love one another. That can be a compliment or it can be a criticism. See how these Christians love one another. If people can't see that we love one another, then we're not bearing witness to what Jesus told us to do. And our love must be more than just words. Our love needs to be actions. It needs to be deeds. It needs to be what we do to support those people who are worse off than us. It needs to be what we do to support those people who are desperate and in need. And so it's an ideal reading for us at the beginning of this Christian Aid Week. Because just think, over the centuries, the Christian church became known for all the good deeds that it did, for the way it helped other people. It was the Christian church who were the first, if you like, social services that we ever had. It was the Christian church who were the first medical services that we had. It was the Christian church who were the first teachers that we had. So it's a reminder to us today that if we're going to try to say that we follow Jesus, if we're going to listen to this new commandment, that we have to do that not just in words, but in a very practical way. It's about reaching out to others. It's about reaching out to those who are in need. It's about care for the downtrodden. It's about helping those who can't help themselves. And then truly people will say, see how these Christians love one another. Amen. So we continue at the bottom of page 12. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. 
In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. Holy God, we pray for the Church, for Bishop Christopher, the congregation and leadership team at St. John's Blackheath, Charlton and Blackheath Christian Fellowship, our friends at St. Mary's Lye, and the people of the Diocese Minikaland in Zimbabwe. We bring before you too the work of the Azan Foundation as it campaigns in the church and wider society to eliminate discrimination based on sexuality or gender and a ban on conversion therapy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, all who serve in Parliament and government, and for Clive F. Efford, our MP. We pray for the lands in which we were born, and today we remember especially South Africa, praying that peace and justice will reign, and your church there will thrive. As we commend the world in which Christ rose from the dead to your mercy and protection, we continue in most urgent and deeply concerned prayer for peace in the Ukraine. For the families of those who are injured, the people who are now displaced and refugees. We pray for all who bring aid and support and for those in authority on all sides that a way may be found to bring about peace. We pray that all world leaders would be aware that all authority on earth comes from you and that ultimately they will be accountable to you for the decisions they take. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We hold up the people of the Philippines and their newly elected president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. And at the beginning of Christian Aid Week, we pray for the work of Christian Aid, their partners and all who are blessed by their work around the world. We pray for their supporters who will be raising funds this week, that their harvest will be plentiful. Loving God, we bring before you all children and young people, teachers and support staff, in this season of exams. Calm their nerves and surround these young people with what they need to achieve their potential and give them the assurance that they are your beloved children as are we all and so being precious in your sight is not dependent on any grade achieved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Faithful God, your son Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to live out that command every day in every way we can, so that we may be your people in our community. With this in mind, we pray for Charlton Park Riding for the Disabled, for the Friends of Charlton Park, the Valley Hill Hub, all living and working at Charlton Park Care Home, the staff and volunteers at Queen Elizabeth Hospital, everyone at Oxley's House, and the staff and pupils at Faustine School. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. We lift up to you those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, 
and people who have asked for our support. Remembering by name, Rita Yardley, Victoria Bates, Glenn Willis, James Mayhew, Christine Henderson, Kate Dillon, Yvonne Bell, and Danny Willis. In their suffering and anguish, may they find healing and peace in the wounds of Christ. And as we come to the end of Mental Health Awareness Week, we hold before God all those who are anxious, isolated, lonely or grieving, and anyone who is struggling right now to manage their mental health. May they feel surrounded by those who can hold the Christ light for them in the nighttime of their fears. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And confident that in the undying love of Christ, we may be united with all those who have died in the faith of Christ, we bring before you those who have died and their loved ones who mourn them. Remembering especially Philip William and Kenneth Rose. Surround their families with your love and comfort at this difficult time. God of mercy, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And let us wish each other the peace of Christ. As we sing the offertory hymn, a collection will be taken for the mission of the church. If you'd like to give but don't have any cash with you, please use the card read after the service. For those who are attending service online, a slide will give details of how you can contribute financially if you are able, and uh, the details of how you can make a donation to the Christian aid. So the offertory song hymn is number 353.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. To, to you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. To you be glory and praise forever. And now we give you thanks, because in his victory over the grave a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended, a broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made whole. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. To you be glory and Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen.
rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, Lord our, our hearts hunger for you. you. Give us this bread always. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
We're going to sing hymn number 34. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Just a couple of notices. The first one I should have read out at the beginning of the service, but I mean, you know, nobody's perfect. So as long as I remind you again that today is the start of Christian Aid Week and you've got an envelope for any money that you can contribute to support their work across the globe. And if you can, please gift aid it. It doesn't cost anything to you. If you're paying tax, gift aid it and it will be worth a lot more. Uh, I, I recognize that, you see, from work. Um, because we get, if people gift aid, we get an awful lot more from the government as well as what people give us. So please, if you are donating, gift aid. It doesn't cost anything to you. Um, it says, and you can add it to the collection plate. Well, that's a bit late. That's why I should have read it out at the beginning. Uh, but if you'd rather give electronically, then this week's newsletter has a link so that you can do just that. Uh, please don't forget that the annual church meetings are next Sunday after the service at 11.30. We're going to look back at 2021 and looking forward to the year ahead. If you feel called to stand for election, please see Catherine after the service, who's got the nomination forms for the PCC and for the church wardens. And we're updating our mission action plan. So inside your service booklets, you'll find one of these slips. Please consider responding on the slips. And it says here, place in the mission box, but I got a text message this morning from Liz that she said she forgot to put the mission box out. So it's not only me that's making mistakes this week. Um, she said, if you fill it in, hand it to the church wardens. But there's only one here today, and that's Miriam. She's at the back there. So if you fill a slip in, do give it to Miriam. I think that's all. Anything else? No? Oh, that was smooth. We'll say our final prayer. Father of all, we give, we give you thanks, thanks and, and praise that, that when you were still, still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. home. Dying and living, living he, declared he declared your love, love gave us gave grace. grace and, and open the, the gate, gate of, of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lies give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you for joining our worship today. We hope you feel you've met God here and will leave with hearts on fire to serve God. In the week ahead, before we leave, one of a company, no, we sing our final hymn number 260. 260, our final hymn. Thank you. 